Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. And don't forget to leave us a like and a comment. And you can share with a friend if you enjoy it and subscribe so you're notified of new videos. Thanks and enjoy the show. This week, our Four Seasons of Home Ownership Maintenance Checklist helps a family reclaim and revive their favorite spot, the backyard deck. <laughs> now that we're done with it, I am in love. This house belongs to Shannon Wade, and for the past 10 years, she and her kids have called it home. When we um, moved into the house, one of the things I really enjoyed doing was taking care of the yard, the backyard, taking care of the inside of the house. I usually keep it pretty clean. However, when things break, that's kind of a tough area for me. Shannon's back deck is one of those areas in need of some attention. I enjoy going back there. I like to have a cup of coffee in the mornings, or I've, we have a grill back there, so I cook out on the grill with the kids. I have friends over. We love to sit out there and hang out. There are times when it's raining, I really can't sit out on the back deck. The skylights start leaking. You, know, you pretty much have to have an umbrella to sit underneath there. The rails are pretty bad off as well. Uh, you can walk back there. I just wouldn't hold on to them if you're looking for support. Now we also have the pizza pit out there, which is the big brick thing, kind of molded a little bit. We just haven't used it in a while. We, as a matter of fact, we haven't used it in probably about five or six years. So I'm introducing Shannon to our four seasons of home ownership. These seasonal checklists help homeowners plan and prioritize maintenance chores, many of which will be needed here. The top 10 list for spring starts with service for the AC and heating systems by a professional. Clearing away debris from the AC condenser unit is number two. And number three on the list is clean and repair gutters and downspouts, which is obviously needed here. When it rains, it rains. And it rains, you know, you would think it's, you know, yeah, it rains all over, but it starts pouring right out the center yeah, of this gutter. It's kind of dipped right in the middle there where some of the spikes have come loose. Yeah, so. it has. And I just, it just doesn't have any place to go. Yeah, yeah. I can see you need a few more downspouts in here. We'll, we'll figure out a way to tighten all of that up and hopefully not have to replace anything. And then I have this rotten wood right over here. Yeah. So Need a little not caulking and spackling here. not use this for support here. at all, but yeah, it needs some work and um, it's a talking point when my friends are over, oh, that's for no. sure. No, <laughs> yeah. you don't want that kind of talking point. <laughs> right. So. Okay, right. Well, we'll figure this out and relook at all of the, the cleaning this up and try to get it all working well. Pressure washing decks, fences, and siding is on our if time and budget allow list and had it been done here regularly, there might be a lot less damage to repair. Number four on the top ten list is cleaning debris off the roof and making necessary repairs. Apparently this is also an issue here. Okay, so then I have the skylights and they're just gorgeous. They let in some great sunlight, yeah, sure. but they That's leak a lot. a lot. Besides making repairs to the skylights, the gutters, and the deck, we also plan to remove the old pizza oven and create a better fire pit arrangement for Shannon and the kids. When Alan and I return to start work with Shannon, the kids, Daniel and Lindsay, join us as well. We gotta get this pressure washing done as soon as we can. So if you can figure out where all this stuff can go, uh, garage, outside, wherever you want, and then we'll help you put it, put it wherever you want us to go. Awesome, all right, we got this. Once the deck is clear, we let Shannon lead off with the deck rail demolition. Oh, there you go. Hit it, hit it again. again, hit it again. again. There you go. See how easy that was? Right here. Okay, all right, hit it again. Yep, yep, there you go. All right, I'm coming. Uh, I'm gonna miss it. <laughs> okay. It didn't take much, did it? No, it didn't. Okay, let's put take this away from you right now. <laughs> Building codes don't require a deck this low to have a rail, so we're eliminating it completely to really open up the view. Cutting the post off flush with the joist will give us an even cleaner look, though I doubt Alan could even Are tell since he's lost his glasses again. <laughs> it happens all the time. Usually we find them all in a crumpled up fashion. You want your glasses? Oh my gosh. Leave me alone about my glasses. 
I'm not blind. I'm just, I'm intently focused. That was bad. <laughs> I mean, I looked right at you. <laughs> Next, we begin removing the steps. Well, Shannon said these things are only about a year old. Well, they're in good shape. Uh, you might wonder why we're removing something that's only a year old. Well, we've decided to eliminate the two different stairs and put one step right in the middle. That'll allow us a little room on each side for a really nice planter to kind of make this whole place look a lot better. But what we knew we were going to have to take care of is some sagging right in here. You can see how this thing is down a good bit here. What we didn't expect to have to deal with is what we just found in that corner. The back corner is just dropped all the way, so we've got a little more work to do in this than we had anticipated. And just take these three out, hopefully use the same boards if they're in pretty good shape. At least we bring that up there. Yeah, at least we can get down in there and see. We may be able to take that floor jack and jack that whole thing up at one time. Well, oh, never mind. It's coming up fine. Never mind what I was talking about earlier. <laughs> At the front edge of the deck, we pulled the string across the surface so we could see when the jack brought it back up to level. In the corner, we have to dig out beneath the deck joist a bit to make room for the jack. Then we can use it to lift the whole back corner up to its original position, just below the bottom row of siding on the house. <laughs> Once the joists are supported and secure at the proper height, we can begin replacing the deck boards. Meanwhile, there's quite a ruckus over by the back door. What are you trying to, you trying to get in the door, or what is it? Oh, we do not like spiders. We have a oh. whole bunch of spiders right up there, so we are trying to stay away. And Lindsay just I thought smashed the door was, one. I so. thought the door was some. What the opening? Yeah, we're just a little dramatic. A little dramatic. Yeah, there. because that, but we, they're hanging We there. have something that we can, we can take care of that with. I'm looking forward to him taking care of them and hopefully for good. You might be wondering why I'm drilling holes into a perfectly good trash can. It's because I decided to start composting and I went to buy a composting bin and was really surprised at how much they cost. So I thought I could make one from an old plastic trash can. Started by drilling a series of holes, eight to 10 holes in the bottom, drainage holes and ventilation holes. Then I'm gonna drill the same hole, 5 8 inch diameter, all the way around the outside of the can, spacing them maybe six to eight inches apart. So I'll give you some idea. I'm going to continue that pattern all the way around the whole can. Now it's important to have holes in the can to allow air to come into the can, filter through to help break down the organic matter. Now if I were to take it and just sit it on the ground, of course those bottom holes would be blocked. So it's important to set up some concrete blocks or bricks on the ground so now when you put the can there, air can continue to circulate through. Now the other important thing with compost is you want to mix it so that the organic matter at the bottom gets moved up and the new matter falls to the bottom, it can all break down. So with the can, because it's round, it's easy enough to do by just snapping on the lid. You may need to strap it down with a bungee or tie it, and then just roll it around your yard. And again, because you have all those holes, air's going in, and you're mixing it at the same time, and then, of course, you have to set it back on the blocks. And within a couple of weeks, all that matter will break down, and you've got great compost for your garden. We're using our four seasons of home ownership to help Shannon get her house maintenance back on track and reclaim the area around her backyard deck. We're wrapping up our repairs to the deck itself before we start work on the dilapidated pizza oven. All right, can you get the rest of it? Oh yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get you guys started out here. It's time to eliminate the old pizza oven. You never know on something like this if it's gonna come down very easy or not so easy. We had to paper rock scissors who was gonna get the biggest sledgehammers and who was gonna get the small one. Okay, so uh, who's gonna take the first hit on the pizza oven? Lindsay? Lindsay? Lindsay said she would. Okay, yeah. Lindsay, try to hit it right in the center. Take it easy. You don't have to hit it hard. Just, just try to hit it one time and then we'll see. Okay. Okay, now hit it harder. Of course, I lost uh, miserably and I got the small one. Yeah. I think I saw it move. <laughs> try it again. Okay, oh, yeah. oh, that was good. Look, you already got some moving here. Look at this. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now we got some rhythm. Okay, let's don't get hurt, just take it easy. I'm very surprised at how aggressive these guys are going after tearing down the pizza oven. We are knocking down this pizza oven. I smell pizza, old pizza. It's not gonna take any time at all for that thing to be gone. We've got a lot going on here, so my friend and handyman, Bear, is helping us out. Oh, perfect timing for you, Bear. I'll let you do all of the pressure washing. I'm going up on the roof. Can you see all the silicone? 
these are obviously homemade skylights, so we're taking measurements to order two replacement pieces of acrylic. While we wait on those, we've decided to clean out these overloaded gutters. It's a lot of muck up there, and of course it has no place to go because it's been bent down, it's damaged already, so now it's just building up, it's percolating. And what I'm pulling out of there is growing exponentially. This is why gutter cleaning is on our top 10 list. Between this chore and pressure washing, we have enough work to finish out the day. When we were cleaning them yesterday, we saw we had plenty of yeah. plenty of work to do here. Yeah. I so, think well, any of these spikes need to come out. Yes, absolutely. The old gutter spikes have pulled loose from the fascia board, allowing the gutters to sag and leak. <laughs> you thought Man, I was going to do <laughs> So we're replacing them with gutter screws, which will hold them more tightly and support the weight of the gutter. We're also adding another downspout on the corner of the house to deal with the high volume of water this area gets. Next, Alan starts taking apart the old skylights while I pick up the new acrylic. The closer he looks, the more evident it becomes why these skylights were leaking. You can see the concave look of this plexiglass, so we need to do something to give it a little support in the center. Right here, you can see it separated. All the water going straight in there and down. Bring it on down. Yes. What do you think there? I'm loving it. I'm oh. loving it. The sunlight, wow. I can see it. You can actually see through it now? Yeah. How would you feel if I did a divider between these so you, it looked like then you had four skylights instead of two? Oh, that's not, that sounds nice. So once the other skylight is opened up and the old acrylic is gone, Alan and Bear attach a piece of cedar across the center of each opening. They're installing it slightly higher than the frame to create an arch in the middle that will help shed the water. Then we can carefully set the acrylic in place and press it into the ceiling around the edges. Finally, we add a generous coat of roofing cement to all the screw heads and seams to finish sealing the unit. In the meantime, Alan is about to finish building that single center step so we can begin applying the stain. Anytime you're using several gallons of the exact same color, it's always a lot better to mix them together in a five gallon bucket. That way you get consistency from gallon to gallon. Now, after I mix this up, I'm going to put a little bit in the little work pot here and have Lindsay use it to put a really light coat over all of the new wood that we use to repair the deck. Then the whole family will get together and roll out one solid coat and we'll be finished with the deck. While they're busy with that, Alan and I are going to create a more permanent fire pit for them. All right, what you have in mind for the fire pit? Well, I think we're gonna go long and narrow. That's about 18 inches right there. Now are you gonna sink it? Is it gonna be like a yeah. trench? Yeah, 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 I, I wanted to dig down about a foot. Okay. You know, that's why I'm glad you got the shovel. <laughs> You know, I will be the first to admit that I don't like raking, but when I have to do it, I want to get done quickly. And so I'm always in the market for a really good rake. And I think I found one right here. Now this is the Ames Collector Series. And just taking it out of the bin here, first of all, I noticed that it's very light. So it's not gonna wear me out when I'm raking my leaves. Another thing I noticed across the aisle was look how wide this head is. It's 26 inches wide. That means it's gonna collect more leaves as I'm working. Now, as you put it down on the ground, one of the things you may notice is that all the tines strike the ground at one time. What does that mean? That means you're gonna get more leaves and less leaves are going to escape. The tines are closer together, which means it's not gonna clog, so I don't have to spend so much time trying to clean the rake before I can use it again. It's got a 60 inch steel handle. That means I've got a long reach, it's very durable. All in all, I will say, I'm still not gonna like raking, but with this rake, I'm gonna get it done a lot quicker. The spring top 10 list from our four seasons of home ownership is a great tool to help homeowners keep up with household maintenance. It's already helped Shannon identify and correct several issues around her backyard deck, but it also includes other areas of the home, like cleaning and repairing window screens, cleaning lint from the dryer exhaust pipe, and lubricating hinges, gates, garage door tracks, and locks. Shannon and the kids worked late yesterday to finish applying the stain, and this morning we have the ceiling fan working to dry it out. Which reminds me about number 10 on the list. When the weather warms up, reverse your ceiling fans to the counterclockwise direction to blow air downward. 
Well, it looks like they got all the stain on. Looks pretty good. It does. Looks like it needs a little sunshine to dry it out. Yeah, I need to dry it out a little bit. Well, we can let that sit for a while. We've got plenty to do with this fire pit. Uh, I'll level all of this off okay. and uh, start doing that. If you'll all get right. us some concrete for a little bit of foundation the action. Concrete here. Let me go get yeah. some water. All right, that sounds good. Our hole here is two-tiered. The lower area will contain the burning logs. The more shallow area around the perimeter will contain our brick border. To support that, Alan is mixing some fast-setting concrete that we will trowel out along the ledge to serve as a foundation for the bricks. All right, so I'm gonna have these here, okay. run these along here, and right. I guess there's only enough room for one of us down here. Right. So if you wanted to go ahead and start the benches. Oh, you want me to dig holes? Yeah, you dig post holes. Dig the post holes. Okay. All right. So, all right. Grab your friend, the post hole digger. PhD. While Alan works on the benches and I pretend to be a brick mason, Shannon and the kids are getting started on the two flower beds that will flank the deck steps on either side. Prepping your flower bed is number nine on our Four Seasons Top Ten list, and number eight goes right along with it. Sharpen your garden tools and inspect the condition of your wheelbarrow. All right, so how about we pick up this plant and just take it out of there and shake it a little bit, and I think we're supposed to loosen up the roots. We started planting plants, digging holes, getting dirty. It was all in our nails and our hair and our eyes and our teeth. It's all over the place. So the kids are pretty good sports on planting the plants and the flowers that we've been doing, but they're getting a little exhausted, and they don't mind sharing with me that they're exhausted. Get that one more spot, and let's try it again. Maybe just a wee bit more, just a hair. Just a wee. Do you know how much you know how much a wee is? This is the last time I dove him. He's done with it. He's not doing it anymore. Just get Lindsay, it in can you do it? it there we go. A little bit deeper. I'm kidding. <laughs> Just a wee bit deeper. So now that we've stained the deck, it is looking gorgeous. We're putting these plants in, they're looking gorgeous. It's like the deck is coming to life and it's the it's just waking up back there. Since they've worked so hard, maybe now's a good time to share my solution to their spider problem. I know you had a crazy reaction when you saw all the spiders up here before, and uh, this is the stuff I was telling you about. Yeah. So step forward, one hand there, one hand there, and just shoot it all the way around up there. The cool thing about the sprayer on this Miss Muffet's Revenge is that it shoots up to 12 feet, so it's ideal for situations like this. The day after you apply it, sweep away all the cobwebs and it will keep the spiders away for up to 12 months. Now I want to tie the fire pit and benches to the deck, so I'm marking off a path from the deck steps to the fire pit so we can remove all of the grass and fill the space with pea gravel. Now it looks really good, but it's also very practical because it will keep embers from the fire from burning the grass. Finally, it's time to start putting everything back together and Shannon wants to pot some of her container plants to add color to the deck. Now most of the pots and planters were cracked by freeze damage over the winter, so we've hooked her up with some resin planters from Southern Patio. These things are so cool because they're completely resistant to freeze damage, but they're also very lightweight and available in a variety of styles that mimic natural materials. So we've lived in this house for 10 years. We've loved the back deck, but it's needed some work. And now that we're done with it, I am in love. The purpose of our Four Seasons of Home Ownership is to make it easy for people to keep up with the chores that will help maintain their homes. By working through the list with us, Shannon not only figured out what to do, but how to do it. And in the process of correcting some issues with her deck and the skylights and gutters above it, we were able to make some pretty cool improvements. The deck is not only level now and newly stained, but it also flows into the lawn thanks to that new center step and the pebble pathway. The old pizza oven that had become quite an eyesore has been repurposed into a fire pit that the whole family can enjoy. And now the skylights let the sun in, but not the rain, while the gutters will catch the runoff instead of dumping it on the deck. I am in love with the deck itself. When you walk up to it, it is so spacious. When we took that railing down, it's almost like it added an extra 10 feet to the, to the area. And now we have plants up there and flowers. It's looking gorgeous. I'm so excited about hanging out out here, having some friends over, cooking out on the grill, the kids having their friends over. We're just super pumped about that. This deck is a great before and after picture, and it also illustrates how important it is to properly maintain your home. It would have really cost Shannon a lot of money to repair this deck if she had waited much longer. Hey, I'm Danny Lipford. Thanks so much for being with us here on today's Homeowner.
you know, those marshmallows are looking pretty good. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to comment, like, and hit the bell icon so that we can notify you when new videos are posted. And don't go anywhere. Click around and continue the home improving fun.